you can be sure that if there is fear overtaking the system, that it is ego at play. It brings disease to the system. It causes the cells of the body to lose their strength. It's an attack, it's a vibrational attack on the very cells of the body. So if you want to remain healthy, you can't, it's a tremor, it's that light tremor, which is the worst one of all. Namaskar, Manushika. Namaskar. My question is about um, a habit that I notice in myself that blocks spontaneity in life. Basically, when I'm in a new situation and there is something that I want to do, it happens quite often that um, I'm already assuming that I'm not allowed to do it, even though nobody told me that that's the case. And it also happens that uh, I already assume that people are not gonna like the thing that I will do, even though there's no clear signs for that. So how do I let go of that um, behavior? You have to catch yourself each time. There's no other way to do it. There has to be a deep urge within the system to change something. There has to be that, you have to create that, inculcate that in yourself, that you want to change something that's leading you into past um, habits, extrapolating ideas from somewhere else to the situation that you're in now. And this pattern of behavior can only be, it's, it's actually a behavioral tick that has to be unticked. And the way you do that is that you remind yourself each time that I have to catch myself when this happens. And you catch yourself and you stop it right then and there. Of course, what definitely helps is to ask for grace. You know, there is a, there is a lot of energy in this world all around, which is there to support you in the path to self-realization, in the path to self if at all you want to call it a path. It's not really a path, but it's the language that, you know, is easy to understand. So there is, there is no question about it that you have to catch yourself when you're doing that. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Mm -hmm. It's not that your soul is going to jump out at you and say, hey, you know, this is what... No, it's not. That's not what the soul does. The soul is... An, it's impersonal. It's not involved. It's simply impulsing the system towards action that will bring joy in the system. And when you go with the ego, that would be a case of going with the ego, there's suffering. And when you suffer, you know that the ego is at play. Mm -hmm. Whether it's emotional suffering, conceptual suffering, whatever that suffering is, so it's a matter of training yourself, and I think it's quite, quite good that you already know it. Some people don't even know that. They don't know that they're extrapolating from one situation to another and changing the entire discourse of their life experience because of that. Yes. I, f I feel that for me, the, the catching myself is becoming easier and easier, but still Sometimes uh, there are certain fears that are not so big and I can instantly break them. And other ones have so much momentum behind that I don't always feel able to let the fear go and, and, and look away. And I guess maybe there is where the grace can come. Yeah, in. definitely. There is something called grace in this world. Also, what is important to realize is that whenever you feel fear, and most of the time, people don't even know when their system is experiencing fear. They don't know that there is a tremor of fear in the system. First, you have to learn to realize and recognize when fear is taking over your system. It's a light tremor, and it's not just fear of the tiger. That is a fear we can understand. Oh, there's a tiger, run, run, run. 
that is a fear which is understandable, fear of fire, a big blaze. But it's the little fears, those tremors that, that take over the system without your even realizing it. That's the dangerous bit. And you can be sure that if there is fear overtaking the system, that it is ego at play. It just is ego at play. Even if it is an inherited fear, what one would call instinct, mm -hmm. even then it's still ego. It's cellular ego. And it generally happens in the material, physical, but that's not even something to bother about right now. The first mm -hmm. thing is to realize, oh, there is a tremor of fear in the system. You know, people have that when they have to pick up the phone and call the tax bureau. Mm. Or they have to pick up the phone and call uh, to find out why the electric bill has not been sent this month. There's fear in the system. So generally it's more in women, these kind of things, from what over the last 25 years I've got to hear. But it's also there in men and increasingly so. So then you know, aha, this is fear. That means it's the ego noise. Bend. And it's a split second thing. It's not a matter of taking years to do it. It's a split second thing. Ooh, I can feel the tremor of fear. Stop. Bend. Bend. And what are you bending to? You're bending to the source of truth, which is the master of your being, which is the soul, the antar atman, the antar guru. That's where you're bending. Where else are you supposed to, to bend to what and to whom? And the moment you sense the presence of the antar guru within, the antar atman, the soul, the source, the truth, love, the fear just dissolves. And it doesn't matter what kind of fear it is. Fear equals ego. And there are people who come with the argument, but you know, one also needs fear because if you're not afraid, then there are many things you would do. No, not true. Not true. You don't need fear to know what to do and not to do. That's common sense. It's not fear. Fear is destructive to the materiality of your body. It destroys the cells, it brings disease. It brings disease to the system. It causes the cells of the body to lose their strength. It's an attack, it's a vibrational attack on the very cells of the body. So if you want to remain healthy, you can't. It's a tremor, it's that light tremor, which is the worst one of all. Mm -hmm because it's so material, it's so uh, going down to the very cells of the body, you know. It's not a conceptual fear of a tiger, that, that, okay, you can still deal with that easier, but the moment it starts to take over the system physically, you have a problem. And then it starts to become a habit. And when you're young, you can somehow skirt around the issues, and then as you get older, that fear starts to attack the cells of the body, so it brings disease, it brings illness. It starts to attack the emotionality, the emotional consciousness, if you want to call it that, which results in many of the so-called mental aberrations, diseases that come. It attacks the conceptual. The more fearful a person is, in general, the less clearly they can think, the less clearly they can formulate thoughts of any value to them, the less rational they are. And you need to have a strong conceptual if you want to live in this world. You need to have a, an emotional that is capable of deep experience. You can't have deep emotional experience if there's fear. It stands in the way of the system experiencing emotionality in its depths because there's immediate fear of it. So It stands in the way of the transformative consciousness. You can't create if you're fearful, you know. You, you can't create the way you would. 
if the fear was less in the system. So you have to detect this tremor mm. and to repeat. You saw a tiger, you got afraid, okay. It's not the tigers that are the problem, it's those insidious uh, uh, experiences that cause that tremor of fear in the system, which are deadly for the system, deadly. So that's where you have to catch it. And that's only if you want to deepen your self-realization, if you want to deepen that experience of self. If you're not interested in that, then you can do whatever everyone does. I have one more question. Um, the question is about inherited fears. Um, for example, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was caressing a big bull and... Uh, a big bull? A bull, uh, 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 a, male, a, a male cow. And, um, I was wondering what happened to you, <laughs> you were caressing a big ball. That would have been very strange. <laughs> no. Um, and uh, I, I had no fear. I just felt like doing it, and I did it. And uh, then somebody remarked, whoa, don't do that. It's dangerous. It's a, it's a bull, and uh, got to be careful. And, like, how does common sense and, and fear, like, wh where is the... Where's the line that we have to draw? Like, for example, with bulls, okay, but what about, for example, if you go further and elephants or something like that? Um, I feel that a lot of common sense fears start to disappear in me, but where do we have to draw the line and, and follow common sense? When you sense the truth and you go with the truth, it's always okay. It just is always okay. Bull, elephant, tiger, cow, snake, whatever, it, it doesn't really matter. It's the humans that are much more dangerous than those guys, I tell you that for sure. Mm. So I wouldn't go around trying to caress a girl on the street. That I wouldn't do. <laughs> there I would allow the common sense to override the truth. Okay. <laughs> the question is, are you able to detect the impulse of the truth? Are you sure about that impulse, you know? Unless you are quite sure that what you are receiving is the impulse of the truth, it is better to take the route of common sense when it comes to situations that could be really dangerous. Hmm. So I don't think that the bull is such a dangerous thing. I mean, it might just, you know, but you're a few feet in the air, you'll fall, you'll be okay, it's not. Mm. Uh, with the elephant, I would reconsider. <laughs> yes. This impulse of the truth, once, you, once this whole body and this whole system starts to become the instrument of that truth, so it's just doing what it has to do. Bull, tiger, leopard, human, which are much more dangerous, whatever comes in the front, you're just there and you're doing what the system is doing what it is doing, it's an instrument of the truth now, you know? So once it's an instrument of the truth, then after that, it's an instrument of the truth. So if you're meant to be gored by an elephant, then that's what will happen. It needs practice, it needs real sadhana to know, to detect that impulse. To start with, you have to ask always, is this the thing for me to do now? And if you get that impulse, the impulse of the truth is a binary impulse. It is the voice of the universe, if you want to call it that, or it's, it's the impulse of the universe. And its impulse is very clearly binary. There's no maybe there. There's no gray zone. Is this the thing for me to do? That impulse is soft. You have to go towards it circumventing the loud noise of the ego. And once you start to detect that impulse, you'll realize that it's a yes or a no. It's almost like a push forward and a pull back. Different people have a different way of interpreting it. But that impulse is there. It's a binary impulse and it's the soul in action. So, once you're sure that that impulse is indeed being being felt, 
by your system, this thing called whatever its name is with each one over here, then you can go with that pretty securely. But then it might make you do things you don't want to do. Hmm. That you being the ego, you know. Not that you are the ego, but that loud noise of the ego can override the impulse, the truth impulse, which is the problem, actually. Because if you go with the truth, you are not going to be a suffering being. It, it's not possible. You're just mainly in a state of joy. I'm not saying you're there dancing with rose petals falling from the sky to the violins on the Ganga or something. I haven't seen one till now, but I'm sure one will turn up if required. It's not going to be like that. It's this very subtle joy. It's like something that is carrying the system and whatever suffering is going on around, it just doesn't, it doesn't shake you because you're in the truth. You're sitting solidly in the center of your being, which is the truth. And anyone who does this practice, who takes up the practice and does the sadhana, they will feel this. And then it's suddenly like, oh, but how did I live my whole life not knowing that at the center of my being is the soul impulse? How did I live all these years not knowing it? And once you know it, you just know it, you cannot unknow that thing anymore. It's like you can't get rid of the soul anymore. And sometimes the ego doesn't want that thing. It doesn't want to deal with that soul because that truth impulse is there. So, you train yourself to detect that truth impulse over the noise of the ego. You knew that as a child, as a small baby. How do you think that baby is operating? One can say it's instinct, but one can also say it's the soul impulse. From a spiritual point of view, that's what's going on. So, you need to train yourself to tune in and be present here and now and try to feel that impulse.